Boys and gents, and welcome to CG Reaction. And this is how did Germany got so strong after losing World War One by the channel Armchair Historian. After a long time reacting to Armchair Historian, he makes great content. Even though he got he gets you know demonetized a lot, sadly his channel is great. So yeah, how did Germany got so strong? I always thought that you know the Germany uh, obviously uh, Hitler and Nazi be, uh, had so many equipments and weapons. As I've said in the past, that you know he duped his own people. Uh, he started with Volkswagen and the Beetle. He told people that he's gonna give a car to the people if they all chip in uh, every month with their payment. So even the kids, uh, you know every family member chip in somewhat percentage of whatever they earned to the government and along the way they would give them a brand new car or something like that so people were happy they were doing that you know in the end it turns out that hitler never intended to give anybody a car Volkswagen just was a smoke screen uh, it was never really about to happen and he just uh, used that money to create tanks airplanes and things like that war equipments because in World War two uh, Germany's uh, overwhelming equipments like well, you know tanks and airplane was surprising but it was because of this but that still uh, doesn't answer that after Treaty of Versailles you know Germany's economy was doing way worse you know so how did the people made enough money so they could chip in and give Hitler that much money so that is one thing it is surprising I don't know how they did that but I'm sure our armchair history will go into depth in this one because I always was fascinated by that so yeah let's watch this video and remember people if you like my reaction don't forget to like and subscribe and support this channel this way I know which type of videos to and which channel to react to more and uh, you know check out the other reaction I did uh, there's a link in the description with all my uh, reaction videos uh, check out the card check out the end cards and yeah let's, uh, let's watch this video on a cold day in November the citizens of Munich are going about their daily business but today is no ordinary day, as thousands of armed radicals known as the Brown Shirts have taken to the streets. Even though party. the Great War is over, the German people live in a tense and uneasy atmosphere. Inflation has spiraled out of control, and it is not uncommon to see price tags with numbers in the trillions. It is only a matter of time before the situation reaches a critical point. Doises. Yeah, I think same thing is in the Vietnam about currency. That always fascinated me. Their currency is, you know, is so low. It has an advantage uh, in the economy somehow. I don't know. I don't know detail about that. Having lower price for your currency. But it's ridiculous to see how they have, you know, some billions and trillions of money required to buy just a car. I mean, doesn't that become inconvenient over the time? Like you, you're always talking about millions and billions of uh, uh, currency and that doesn't worth much. 150 Milliarden Mark. Jetzt bitte gib mir das Brot für meine Familie. Tut mir leid, Freund. Das ist alles, was du bekommst. Der Preis ist erst letzte Woche gestiegen. Was? Wie viel? Das ist mein ganzer Sport. Das soll doch wenigstens für ein paar Leute Brot reichen. Sehen Sie mal. Es ist, wie ich gesagt habe. It's just fucked up to see this. Your life savings and you can only buy just a few bread to get you out for a day or two. What after that? This is a really grim situation, man. I mean, Treaty of Versailles left this, so of course people were going to fight back eventually. I mean, that was inevitable. This war lets the war. There you go, Nazis. Morgen werden es 210 Milliarden sein. Und so weiter. The screaming thing was unnecessary because at that time I highly doubt people saw Hitler as evil because people are already pissed off and they see Hitler, you know, marching and giving his speeches and people kind of agreed with him too at the time. Hitler didn't from the start said that, you know, he th he sees Germans as a superior race and he's gonna kill apparently everybody. He didn't say that at the start. He just, you know, said the normal thing that people wanted to hear. Like how economy is going to trash, I can solve it and things like that. Oh, surprising how Hitler didn't get shot that time. I think he put somebody in front of him. Before we delve into this video, I'd like to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor. Call of War is a free online strategy game that allows you to rewrite the history of the Second World War alongside millions of users in a player-versus-player environment. 
take control of one of the many countries spanning the globe. Description below within the next 30 days, and you'll unlock the amazing new player pack, which includes a month of high command and 13,000 gold. Yeah, people, uh, go to sbons.org forward slash the armchair war and support this channel because armchair historians videos always get demonetized by YouTube. So, you know, because he covers uh, lots of content that YouTube sees as an issue. So, you know, this channel really needs your help because this is a great channel. It covers a great part of history and that channel really does need your help. So support that channel. Hi, I'm Griffin Johnson, the Armchair Historian. In this video, we will cover how Germany went from being saddled with debt and suffering the worst inflation in history to somehow conquering Europe all within the span of just 20 years. That's ridiculous. While the German National Socialist Party appeared to have brought the economy back on track, we'll also examine how in many ways it didn't. But first, we need to establish just what crippled the German economy, and that requires going further back to the ashes of the Great War, when all hope seemed lost. Shortly after the German surrender on the 11th of November 1918, a socialist uprising forced Kaiser Wilhelm II to abdicate without designating an heir. In the wake of this upheaval, the German monarchy was dismantled, and a new government, popularly referred to as the Weimar Republic, rose to take its place. This new government was forced to sign the humiliating Treaty of Versailles in June 1919. In addition to being forced to pay crippling war reparations, the industrial heartland of the nation was occupied, and the German military was all but dismantled. Public perception of the new republic quickly became overwhelmingly negative, with many patriotic Germans blaming the revolution for their capitulation during the Great War, a national myth that would have devastating consequences further down the line. With virtually no industry and a population hostile to taxation, the Weimar Republic resorted to a solution dear to the hearts of economists everywhere, printing money to satisfy its debtors. Inevitably, this resulted in works. hyperinflation, and the German mark plummeted in value. At its lowest point in late 1923, a little over four... That never works, man. Your money only has value if people agree it has value. You just print out money, that's just gonna lower its value, I guess. I saw the video of how to fail a democracy 101 uh, about, you know, Weimar Republic. In that, it shows that, you know, uh, Germany's foreign minister, Gustav Stresemann, uh, he was the, one of the key, uh, key figures that made sure the economy rose up after World War I. So that kind of explains it, how Germany kind of kicked back. Obviously, that failed too since, you know, Nazi party took over because people were still pissed off. A trillion German marks was equivalent to a single US dollar. In the end, a desperate Germany appealed to the British and Americans for assistance, resulting in the enactment of the Dawes Plan. This plan introduced a new currency based on the gold standard called the Rentenmark, and loaned Germany a massive amount of money to restart its industrial sector. Under the Dawes Plan, the Weimar Republic enjoyed a few years of relative stability and recovery, but in 1929, the Great Depression struck, and funding from the United States evaporated almost overnight. Worse still, Germany's creditors began rushing for repayments. As we know, you know, by seeing all simplified prohibition video, the prohibition was another key thing that, you know, made this depression possible. Plunging the country straight back into financial ruin. While a series of German chancellors like Franz von Papen and General Kurt van Sleicher were busy handling the fallout, a new political faction began to emerge. The National Socialist German Workers' Party, or Nazi. simply the Nazi Party. Founded in 1920, they preyed on middle-class fears of a communist uprising for support and promoted an extremely antagonistic, anti-Semitic platform that demanded a racially oh pure Germany. Despite surging in elections and soon becoming the most popular party, the National Socialists lost two Nazis suppressed everybody, who would have thought? ...million votes in the Reichstag elections in 1932. Seeking to capitalize on this weakness, the conservative establishment within the Republic thought the time was now ripe to pacify this violent party by welcoming some of its leaders into power. Surrounded by conservative ministers and only having a handful of allies in cabinet positions, 
Nazi leader Adolf Hitler was appointed Reich Chancellor by President Paul von Hindenburg in January 1933. The conservative establishment thought they could control him for their own ends, but they couldn't have been more wrong. Suffice to say, Hitler and his movement could not be contained. The methods by which Hitler went from being essentially a lone chancellor surrounded by his opposition to having complete control of the government could warrant its own video. Yeah. But soon enough, the Weimar Republic was no more, and the National Socialist Party was in full control. Using a new secret police force, the Nazis built a system of violent oppression and surveillance attempting to silence dissent and unify the country towards one goal, war. With the outward display of public support, the Nazis first decided to tackle the unemployment problem. In reality, the next decade would merely see the expansion of the German military under the manipulative guise of repairing the economy. In some instances, instead of creating jobs, they simply distorted the numbers by encouraging young couples to get married through generous marriage loans, which removed women from the workforce. This reduced the pool of economically active people, thus creating the illusion of a falsely esteemed work. What the hell? They encourage people to get married so women go out of the pool of, you know, employment since they are, you know, uh, you know in, uh, pregnant or something. So in that way, unemployment goes down. That's just stupid, man. And clever, really clever. Force. Other shady tactics, including counting part-time workers as fully employed or even classifying forced laborers and prisoners as full-time employees. Additionally, in accordance with Nazi racial policy, many Jews were forced out of their jobs or had their businesses confiscated and redistributed to non-Jewish businessmen who displayed loyalty to the party. This falsifiable image of economic recovery opened- Alright, first of all, how does that even help? Uh, how does that, you know, inflating the numbers like, you know, there is uh, no, not much of unemployment anymore. How does that actually help the economy? It's just lying, isn't it? So how did they got the money, you know, to, you know, uh, build all these uh, tanks and planes? And damn, man, Jews. I mean, in the Roman times, Jews were screwed. In here, Hitler screwed Jews over, took their businesses, gave it to, gave it to somebody else. That's just effed up, man up new opportunities for non-Jewish Germans, but at the same time caused enormous suffering and hardship for those deemed undesirable. This isn't to say that there weren't job creation programs. The Nazis invested hundreds of millions of marks into various schemes to get the Germans back to work, and millions of Germans were now able to find full-time jobs in Hitler's new arms factories. But other job creation programs were far less traditional. Co-opting an existing labor program called the Voluntary Labor Service, the Nazis forced the unemployed or people receiving welfare benefits to volunteer for hard labor like farming or clearing earth for the state's massive construction projects. Hundreds of thousands of Germans were forced to toil in abysmal conditions for lower pay than they were even receiving under the welfare program, and any who expressed complaints were sent to early forms of the concentration camps. Oh, okay. That is one way to boost up your economy, isn't it? People who are unemployed or on welfare just, you know, basically force them to work the hard labors with close to not much money. I mean, that would, that would increase the economy. Yeah, that is true, isn't it? This is basically a dictatorship. He can force people to do stuff. Economy and money can grow like that. Makes sense. And yet, to the Nazis, these suffering workers represented an encouraging statistic. By 1935, unemployment rates had plummeted to only 2 million people. But yeah, if you okay. include the unemployment rate, the forced laborers, prisoners, and women taken out of the workforce by marriage loans, the actual unemployment rate stood at about double this figure. However rotten its foundation may have been, the German economy was growing. But it was not nearly enough to cover the amount the government was spending. Rather than temper their ambitions, the Nazis engaged in massive deficit spending to finance the programs they had in mind. German economists instituted a complicated new credit system called MIFO bills that allowed them to create and spend enormous amounts of cash while avoiding a new round of hyperinflation. These MIFO bills essentially acted like government bonds and allowed the Nazis to spend money that didn't really exist. This initially proved successful, but gradually collapsed over time. The German government was spending exorbitant amounts of money on rearmament. I mean, yeah, if you just make up money and it doesn't much have 
you know, credibility behind it, sooner or later it's gonna fall. And public works projects with the mindset that it would all be repaid by the plunder and land seizure of future conquests. They instituted no long-term economic plan and made no attempts to boost foreign trade or look beyond the coming war. As the national debt skyrocketed, the Nazis didn't stop to consider what would happen if they lost the war they had been banking on. Instead, they invested everything they had into ensuring they would win. Every subsidy and every- Damn! Hitler was so sure of himself, he went all in. This is ridiculous. Now I'm wondering how did Germany recover after World War II if they went all in like that with national debt? Because Hitler's like, mm, we're just gonna you know, take the plunder, we are obviously going to win. I can't say that he was that wrong. I mean, he, he almost did win. I mean, it was ridiculous. Defeating him was really hard. In the end, obviously, everybody was, you know, together, allies, you know, crushed him up. But just certain things have uh, went different way. Uh, not, there is a chance Nazi could have won. I mean, I'm pretty sure there is a video on uh, alternate history uh, channel or something like that where they could go like, what if Nazi has, had won? Because I think uh, Hitler... Uh, had a shortage of fuel and things like that by the end if he didn't have that I mean yeah things could have changed differently Every investment made went into manufacturing and engineering at the almost complete abandonment of consumer goods. All of the Nazis' programs and initiatives from job creation to public works to even their racial policies were ultimately meant to serve the cause of rearmament. Perhaps one of the most famous public works launched during this time, the Autobahn Highway System, was no different. Financed in part by laws that granted a billion marks for infrastructure projects, the Autobahn was marketed as a massive modern highway system for the new German citizen to proudly tour his country behind the wheel of a shiny new car. Unsurprisingly, it also had another purpose. Hitler envisioned the highways of the Autobahn as the main arteries of a new military mobilization system. <laughs> Man, Hitler's such an a-hole, isn't he? He was like, mm, I'm gonna give you a car, I'm gonna give you a new Beetle. You know what? I'm also going to improve the Autobahn that already exists and make sure that it's properly connected to every single side of the country. But in the, you know, in his heart he knew he just gonna take the money, build tanks, and he just wants Autobahn so, and make it in a way that he can transport tanks from one side to another. I mean, that's just, he, he duped his own people in a ridiculous way. I'm gonna give you a card and just, I mean, how the hell did he thought that, you know what, let's dupe the people this way. Like, I'm gonna tell them to buy a car for them and just gonna take the money, build tanks and just create an autobahn like that. He pictured columns upon columns of panzers rolling down the roads protected by a thick concrete shell that towered over the highways and blocked air attacks. Contrary to his lofty vision, no concrete tunnels were ever built, and the roads proved too unstable for heavy tanks to roll along. Even the system under which the highways were laid out prevented them from having any use in military mobilization since the roads were too far away from any front line. Despite creating over 100,000 jobs and improving infrastructure, the Autobahn's true success was propagandistic. Hitler personally planned some routes to weave through the most picture- Wait a minute, so Autobahn wasn't good at try, you know, transporting tanks from one side to another? Huh. Because Americans saw that, the president, and he's like, you know, I want some of that, and he created an interstate system. And I know in American interstate system, you can transport tanks, you can even land a plane, because the way they created, you know, the, those interstate uh, highways that, you know, it's just right length when you, if you can uh, land a military jet or something. I mean, they, they are that wide. I mean, they are created uh, at a certain code that, you know, it must be in a way that you can land a plane. That's why whenever you had, you know, interstate system in America, you can see around side, there is not going to be uh, any, you know, some kind of a structure or anything, pole or something that could, you know, come in the way of landing the plane. Even if there is something like billboard or something, there will be a bit more outside uh, of a you know, highway than close to it. So I guess, you know, what inspired the interstate system was just propaganda. You couldn't transport tank because the road sucked in Autobahn.
picturesque views in Germany and insisted on the most modern bridge and road designs to project the image of a unified and idealistic state. But the government encountered a bump in the Autobahn. The average citizen couldn't afford a car, so who is going to use the new highway system in the first place? As a solution, Hitler imagined an affordable and cheaply produced vehicle known as the People's Car, or Volkswagen, that everyday citizens could purchase and drive through the new scenic highways through the beautiful German countryside. A mass advertising campaign and workers' payment program were launched to promote the car, and hundreds of thousands of laborers enthusiastically signed on. But that was as bullshit. with so much during this period, everything ended up being used in service of the ultimate goal instead, rearmament. Despite 340,000 workers investing 110 million Reichsmarks into the car payment program, not one would actually receive a car. All of the funds collected by the People's Car Campaign went straight towards war spending. Car ownership in Germany did noticeably increase during this period, but the Autobahn was not nearly the success portrayed by Nazi propaganda. Even by 1939, railways remained the most common form of transport in the country. These years of spending on military rearmament did not go unnoticed. As Germany was not yet ready for war, Hitler had to fabricate a variety of excuses to justify the expansion of the armed forces to foreign powers. To the surprise of many, Germany was suddenly very interested in producing thousands upon thousands of innocent passenger planes and agricultural tractors. These vehicles only existed on paper, however. There was nothing innocent nor agricultural about the Messerschmitts and Panzers rolling off the assembly lines. Or the right <laughs> He told the European power, hmm, I'm, I'm just building tractors for farmers and passenger planes. And they started to build Panzers and, you know, Messerschmitts or whatever he said. Oh, that is just after. Rifles and howitzers emerging under the table from civilian manufacturers across the country. This disguised military buildup culminated in 1935 when mandatory conscription was passed, and by the end of the year, the army had grown to nearly 800,000 men, over eight times the maximum set by the Treaty of Versailles. With this act, the last of Germany's non-Jewish unemployed men were swept into military service, and unemployment was, on paper at least, fully eradicated. Ah. The result of all of this was that Germany entered the Second World War far better off than it had been at the end of the last Great War. The gross national product had surged to well over 100 billion Reichsmarks in 1939, from a low of 60 billion in 19... <laughs> so he took every other unemployed people and he just like, you know what, uh, you know, forcibly enlist in the army. So in that way, nobody's unemployed. 1932. And to all, it seemed that Germany had fully regained its strength. But while unemployment was down and manufacturing and capital were up, many of those so-called employed Germans were slaving away in a labor camp, and that capital was contingent on the complete success of the war. Further, the benefits from all of this economic success were skewed heavily towards those considered true Germans, and came at the expense of everyone else. Like the Autobahn unable to carry Hitler's tanks, the Nazi economy was shiny on the surface, but hollow at its core. What is going <laughs> on? That was so damn horrible. The, the way, uh, you know, Hitler mastermind everything and the level of, uh, you know, horribleness that had World War II all around it. The Blitzkrieg alone, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, but that thing alone, you know, uh, gives me shivers. Like, you are in the, uh, you know, war field. You're expecting an enemy come to you and, you know, you just see refugees running towards you and among them there are some enemies. I mean, how do you, now you have to actively look for Nazis to shoot. Otherwise you could shoot a innocent refugee. Hitler knew this. This is ridiculous, man. And this is just one of the tactics that he used. I've seen some of the Dark Five's video, uh, you know that channel Dark Five where, you know, the grim music plays and he shows about, and I've seen the, some of the super weapons that Hitler was, uh, you know, allegedly creating, and some of them has backing too. I remember hearing about some kind of a bell that, you know, Nazis dug inside the ground and when they, uh, you know, it, it was a literal bell, a giant, gigantic bell, and it created a frequency that if, if they uses that, it causes a massive earthquake that tears apart ground and, you know, sung, uh, sings in the house and things like that. Feels like a, you know, James Bond villain type of thing, can't be real, but I don't know, man. 
technically it's possible so what if nazi had perfected that and nazi was looking into really advanced shit they didn't got to complete that obviously the war ended but if the war hadn't ended just a few more years a year or two i don't know what nazi would have come up with man that's just ridiculous world war ii was terrifying anybody goes into detail of what nazis were thinking what hitler was thinking and if the war hadn't ended when it ended just if if it, it had just gone one or two more years what things would have changed it's just ridiculous even if nazi loses after that they would have caused lots of issues by then all right people if you like my reaction don't forget to like and subscribe uh, check out the other reaction i did there's a link in the description check out the card check out the end cards support the channel subscribe and i'll see you next time